In my last video, I showed you how I made the city for my game procedurally generated. Doing so, I create a different experience for the player every time he starts a new game. You may not know, but I'm working on a multiplayer zombie survival game in my spare time, and it has been a little while since my last devlog. Oh my, five freaking months! I really hope I'm not 60 years old when I finish the game. Anyway, let me show you what I've been doing for the past 5 months. All of us have played Minecraft at some point in time. It is a game I love very much. In there you can do so many things. You can explore the vast world. You can build structures, craft different items and all in all survive. But out of everything in Minecraft, the one thing that I like the most is the inventory system. Which is one thing that I really want to add in my game. I am not just going to copy and paste it. I will start by making my own inventory and see where we end up. And yeah, I think this is it. With the press of a single button, I open the inventory. Oops, this kinda looks like the inventory from Minecraft. Well, it's ready, I just hope Minecraft doesn't send a hitman after me. Somebody's knocking on my door. Well, I had to make some changes to the way the inventory looks. When you go near a pickable item, you can see a button indicating that you can collect it. Once it is picked up, the item is placed in the inventory. Here, you can rearrange the items to your preference or choose to drop them if needed. Some items are stackable, meaning multiple items of the same type can occupy a single inventory slot. Items will have different rarity of finding them. Those that have a grey background are common items. Green is for items that are not that common. Blue is for rare items. Red is for extremely rare items. And purple is, well, if you've got a purple, you have an enormous advantage over other players and zombies. I have added a small window at the top left of the screen. It displays details about the item that is currently hovered over by the mouse cursor. And I have also added a short description for each item in the game. Like this one for example. Squeeze tight and shoot. There is also a hotbar at the bottom of the screen. Weapons that are added to the hotbar can be equipped by the player. For the actual weapons, currently we have a pistol, shotgun, and a rifle. To make it more exciting, let's add enemies for the player to shoot at. This is our first zombie and yeah, he looks alright. I am not going to leave the zombie T-posing like that, so let's animate it. Mixamo is a really valuable resource for animations. The animations are of high quality and cover a wide range of actions suitable for various types of games and projects. You can also adjust and fine-tune the animations to your liking. Mixamo also has a wide variety of characters that you can download and use. The characters come in various styles, from cartoonish to more realistic designs. They are suitable for different types of games and I have personally used some of them. You should definitely check them out, they are... They are really high quality. Now that I added some animations to our zombie, it came to life. That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> As you can see, I also made the zombie ragdoll when shot in the head. Now that our zombie is animated, let's make it so it can move around. For the movement of my zombies, I decided to use Unity's nav mesh system. This system provides a robust way for characters to navigate the game world, avoiding obstacles and finding the shortest path to a target point. The behavior of the zombie is determined by a state machine that consists of four distinct states. Only one of these states can be active at a time. The transitions from one state to another are as follows. The entry state of the zombie is idle. If something of interest triggers the zombie, like a player for example, the zombie will start chasing the player. When it gets near him, the zombie will then shift into the attack state. The zombie may transition into a death state at any given moment. This is the last state after which the zombie becomes incapable of transitioning into any other state. It took me some time to implement this state machine in code, but it finally works. Sometimes life is cock and ball torture. 
without the cock and balls. Okay, now it works. I get near a zombie. It starts chasing me. When it gets close enough, it will start attacking me. One final touch I would like to add is gore and dismemberment effects. I really enjoy games that have this feature as it significantly enhances the gaming experience. I quickly made some nice looking blood effects using Unity's particle system. I made it so dismemberment only occurs when a zombie is shot in the head, with an equal chance of the head either exploding or becoming decapitated. For the future I plan to extend dismemberment capabilities to include other body parts as well. The way I made dismemberment work is quite interesting. For my game I am using characters from Sinti's assets, each character consisting of a single 3D mesh. And I can't just cut a part of that mesh. To overcome this I had to use this mesh cutting asset that allows me to cut through any part of that mesh. As simple as this. I made it so you can select the body part and save it. Now when a zombie is shot I downscale the impacted body part and spawn a separate pre-cut mesh at the place of the shot. It looks really good but currently I have only two zombies. So I bought this asset pack with more zombie types. Being bad at 3D modeling can really hurt your wallet. Now the final result looks like this. Be sure to leave a comment to let me know whether you like it. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you had a good time throughout the video. If you did, consider subscribing as it will help the channel. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next one.